stealth entrance, no special effects, no whip sound. Instead, why don't we let the knife do the introduction? Oh, sounding good, looking good, pop pop. In this nut and fancy KRV, we are going to consider a US produced, I think, hard use tactical folding knife. The Elisha Witz designed Hogue marketed EX01. Welcome to the Nut and Fancy Tabletop Review. Call them KRVs. Knife review videos. And yes, I still do them. As long as you're watching them, they quit getting views, I'll go do something else. I got lots to do. Two models to show you, by the way. That one's sounding good as well. On the top, the drop point. 4 inch bladed aluminum NOD version that is model 34151 check that on the bottom they call it G Mascus it's sculpted G10 version of the EX01 it's model 34159 they got lots of variations these are some of my favorite of course it's not the first time you've seen them on the Nut Fancy Project camera, EX01. If you've been watching <clears> this is made in the United States. You've as seen well. them thrown out there. 154 some other, steel. There's two what versions of this hard knife. Use tactical folding One is knife in reviews, aluminum. I these have think been shown as around $145. Options. Another one and in G10 in around $100. Opinion, darn good ones. 60. At that. Very good ones. And that will take us to the details to prove my case. No, 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 no. There's a sound effect. No extra charge. Check that out. Philosophy of use. What do you think I'm going to say? Guys who've been following the Nut and Fancy Project, my knife reviews since 2008, already know that I will cover what I term the tactical POU. That is, as an emergency defensive tool, will this knife fill that very serious and honestly very regrettable role for my LE, military, and responsible civilian subscribers. When you're talking about the EX01 by Hogue, and by the way they call it the Extreme Series, so that makes it BA officially I guess, whatever. The answer is yes, these are tactical blades. And as we delve into ergonomics handle construction, I'll show you why. Now one is the size. These are kind of on the larger size of knives. There's much bigger, I've reviewed a lot bigger knives than this, folding knives. But they're, they're good sized blades, and sometimes those big blades excite me. Seriously, they do. I know I'm weird that way. Tactical philosophy of use? Absolutely. These knives will serve that well. I think that's their true calling, to be honest with you. I'm also going to throw out a philosophy of use, and I may or may not have mentioned this before. I'll say a fun knife. Fun knife, nothing fancy. Yeah. It's just fun to fondle, to play with. I mean, you heard that thwack. Here it comes again. That's satisfying. That's a satisfying pop, and it's fun to watch TV, listen to your wife, or pretend to listen to your wife. You guys ever done that? Yeah. Secret to a good marriage. There's a little family tip for you in the KRV. Yeah. So you'd be fondling your knife. Us knife guys know what it's like. We're sitting here listening, doing this or that, and we're fondling our blades. It's like, I don't know whatever we're doing. You got to see my son, Tactical Doodle. I mean, he is an addict. Whatever knife there is, I mean, I'll be talking to him. It's like I'm probably listening to a pop every five seconds. <laughs> he just loves them. A fun knife, absolutely. These knives could serve that role, and I'm sure that's mostly what they serve with most guys. EDC, maybe, maybe. Uh, they make a smaller version of it, a three and a half inch blade. It's not much smaller, but maybe for you guys, a big blade is exactly what you need to EDC. Like ranchers, for instance. I need a big blade DDC nut and fancy. Okay, I get it. For me, I like a much smaller blade. What do I have on me now? Oh, you guys are going to freak on this. That's my EDC today. Eagle HD by Al Mar. So good. Love it. Usually I'll carry a Flash, maybe a Spyderco Delica 4, something like that. And then, of course, especially with these higher-end knives, gift. I really like reminding you of that philosophy of use because this is another one of those knives that if your soldier, your police officer, or heck, your civilian, 
gets, how could you just not take this box out and cry? Just cry a little bit. Tears of gratitude <laughs> that you're getting a cool knife. I'll leave philosophy of use at that. Now between these two knives, two versions I'm showing you, which do you think I like best? This one or that one? None fans, we think you like that one. I bet you that's what most guys are saying. Wrong. Surprised? Well, I think guys know. T and Piers, knife T and Piers, been with me forever. They know I like the ODs. I like the flat desert earth colorations. And by the way, that's a good looking OD. That's anodized. It's not duracoated, not seracoated. That's anodizing. And it's always a box of chocolates when you anodize, meaning <laughs> you really don't know what shade you're going to get. That's. I don't know if the camera's capturing that, but that's an OD. It's not really a tan shade. Good looking. I like it. But you guys know how I'm on weight, right? And we are getting into the weight talking point here. This is lighter. 5.2 ounces, 5.8 ounces on these EX01s. There's other reasons I'm going to cover why I like this one better. And the looks on this, it's handsome blade. Like the looks, I think just in the tactical philosophy of use, I think it's a little bit more functional. I'll get to that clip. You guys already noticed that, didn't you? You don't miss anything. Let me do this so I don't distract you. <laughs> there we go. So much better. Yeah, I like that one better. And speaking of which, I did mention, I think, there are lots of variations on the EX-01. And I will say, I actually don't have one on the table like their Tanto version. There, I said it. I like the elegant um, angles on their Tanto. I'll roll a picture in here somewhere. It's not too abrupt. It's kind of like the Microtech SOCOM Tanto blade, which I did review, and I showed you, and I told you I like that one. Not ideal. Usually the Tantos have that really thick slab of steel. I, I didn't really test or use the Tanto EX-01, but I think it's a good option, especially in PE, plain edge. They do have the 3.5 inch bladed versions. These are the larger 4 inch versions. EDCable, lighter weight. I think the aluminum 3.5 inch EX01 is 4.6 ounces, the aluminum. And then the G10 one is a little bit lighter at 4.3 ounces. But none fancy, we know from watching your videos over the years, you love the 4 ounce, let's call it a goal, why don't we, of a tactical blade. And I will say, as I've always said, you are exactly right. When a knife it gets it right, Na 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 na. Huh. You'll see that one again before the video ends. I am excited. I like it. But I do give allowances for big blades when they do big things. And in the tactical POU, big things means reach. And when you're talking about a blade this broad, slashing capability, penetration capability, standoff capability with a four inch blade that that gives you. Now I'm not going to say this is the biggest blade around, reference some cold steel videos I've done, the Espada for instance. Those are sick huge blades and I love those. But four inches kind of on the larger size. In some people's minds a four inch tactical blade is like whoa no way that is monstrous. Not to me, I, I kind of prefer it. As you've seen in my EDC system I don't just run around with this EDC and it's going to be a smaller blade. Today's a little bit different because different I have the Eagle HD with me, but normally it's, like I said, a, a smaller blade. But at what these knives do for their weights, 5.8, eh, more of this one, 5.2, they're in the ballpark. I can't rave about the weights. I mean, they're still, I mean, you know you're carrying them, but it's not huge. Let's take a look at these blades. I'm a sucker for a good drop point. I'm a sucker for a good stone washed finish drop point and this one's about perfectly executed on this US produced blade. I love saying that because I like encouraging it. That is a nice stone wash finish on there. Just perfect. Speaking of perfect, so is the relief edge on these things. Polished. I didn't have to slap this on the EPA at all. Offensively sharp out of box as every good knife should be, especially if they're made here in the US. Good job, Hogue. They just did a fabulous job on both of the edges here. And they're going to be easy enough to resharpen. You have some flats right here for your consistent angle sharpener, Edge Pro Apex, whatever you're using. 
Works great. Beautiful drop point. Functional. Let's start off with the tip right here. Adequately strong. I wouldn't say that's a surgical tip. It ain't. Carry your SOG Aegis if you want that. But it's kind of striking that compromise between precision and strength. Look at that relief edge on that one. Beautiful. Oh, now that's how it should be. Unsharpened swedge right there. Elishawitz logo. And yes, I engraved this one. I think I'm probably going to sell this one to make more funds for more knives. Watch for it. Signed certificate. Oh, that's a sick blade. Flat ground from this portion on down to the relief edge. Unsharpened swedge. It's, it's a handsome knife. Both of them are. I just love the blade shape. And it is a thick slab of steel, dudes. 1.5 inches in thickness. Hard use tactical folder? Yeah, I would say hard use. Now we'll talk about durability. I did not go out and hard use these. Maybe I should have, didn't. And I think Hogue does say somewhere on their website that they have fixed blade reliability because of their locking mechanism. We'll take a look at it here in a second. I hate it when folding knife makers say that. If you want a fixed blade, if you want fixed blade strength, get a fixed blade knife. Ain't seen a folder yet that measures up to a good, well-designed, full-tang fixed blade knife. And you can get one about the same weight as these. But that being said, in the tactical philosophy of use, are they strong enough? Yes, I would say absolutely. Absolutely. Blade shape, loving it. No criticism. And like I said, the Tanto is definitely worth your consideration. The feel, by the way, is actually pretty much awesome as well on both these knives. Talking to balance, and I'll take us a speed. You've already seen it, heard it, embraced it. The speed is outstanding on both of these EX01s. I love it when I can study, carry, and use at least two versions of the knife. I And I'll only do this on knives that I really dig and that I can secure two versions for. I didn't really look at the bushings on there. Can you guys see it? I don't know if it's Teflon. I don't see any phosphor bronze. But whatever it is, it's probably Teflon. Smooth. Now, it's not a ball bearing deployment system. You don't need that for a smooth, well balanced knife. But it comes out very fast. Very fast. Again, do you need an auto? No, you don't. Lock up. Tight, maybe just a very slight amount of movement in the aluminum EX01. Up and down, nothing. I already checked this one. I've been carrying this one for a couple months now. Excellent. In fact, in a gear check, I think I busted out this uh, G10 EX01. You saw that with Zant, man, I think. Lockup is excellent. And that'll probably take us to the lock. Notice the hardened steel, stainless steel piston right there. The engagement, it's going to be about a half engagement on that tapered pin as it pops into that tank. There you go. So there's some wear indicated there. How strong is that compared to, I don't know, the Axis Lock, Triad? I don't really know. For realistic use, I think it'll be fine. Uh, is that the stro strongest locking mechanism out there? No, but I, I probably not. But then again, I haven't really hard used it. Probably won't. Not really interested. For realistic use, more than adequate, I would think. Has a real nice solid sound too when it locks up like that. And there's your stop pin. Hogue does make it a point to brag about the hardened stainless steel features of everything in their knives. That's cool. 5.2 ounces. Do you notice the lack? I always love pointing this out. You know it's coming. The lack of something in here. Well, nothing fancy. There's no liners in there. Yeah, and to that I say hallelujah. Well done, Hogue, that you didn't put stainless steel liners in that. This handle material is plenty strong for what you need it to do. And I think they have stainless steel embeddings right here milled into the pivot point. So you do have some torsional rigidity there. But on this portion, no, you don't. Now, of course, this handle, full aluminum, you don't need it. Lock up and strength, I would say, again, pretty darn good. One thing we always look at in a nut and fancy video is the thumb studs, the small details. About perfect on these thumb studs. There's no volcano issues, even though it does look like a volcano. To that, I mean, does it is it slick? Is it hard to get a hold of? No. 
There's no occlusions in the handle. Notice the big milling that you have access to. Well done, Hogue. Well, I should say Elishowitz. He put this together. Oh, what do you know? It's cut out for lefties, too. That's kind of special. Kind of special. Aluminum one has the same thing. Great cutouts. Back to the handles. They're actually pretty comfortable. Ergonomically, they're pretty comfortable. In hand, they feel good. Forward grip and reverse grip. Excellent. They're not open in the back. Pillar constructed. You can see that. They're both featuring the same kind of ventilated back spacer where the handle materials come through and there is some way for gunk and dust and whatever to get out. I don't mind that. It's fine. It's basically an enclosed handle design on the aluminum and the G10 version. No hot spots. Adequately rounded halves. I didn't notice in using this knife that something was obnoxious with it. You know I gotta talk about it. Always do. How's that jimping? Nothing fancy. Well I gotta say it sucks. Yeah, that's jimping gone wrong right there. Hey, Elishowitz, don't know the dude, by the way, or Hogue, fix it. If you're going to do it, do it right. Guess i got to roll it in now. This is jimping done right. SOG, paramilitary. Oh, my gosh, that is perfect jimping. Now, is it as is aesthetic and cool looking as this one? Probably not. And, you know, a lot of what the knife makers are trying to do is sell image to sell the knife. I mean, what good is it if they put a knife together and no one buys it? They want it to look cool. They want to sell it as cool. And to do that, they're going to give it names like Extreme Ops, Extreme Series, <laughs> whatever. I just wish it had better jimping. I will say the G10 jimping here are the milling. It's not really jimping. Eh, it kind of does something for you. Kind of, sort of. Aluminum handle version versus G10 as far as ergonomics go. I prefer this. You can see there's some side milling here that does provide traction. By the way, there's your Torx mini screws that put the handle halves together. You can take it apart. But you might want to think twice before you do that because you got lots going on there on the pivot point. And here comes a criticism, and I think it is well-deserved. Thank heavens, I repeat, thank heavens, this is not an auto knife. There have been auto knives designed that has all this stuff going on. Can you see a problem ergonomically here with an auto? Well, which, one, which one's the deployment button? Uh, is it that one? Is it that one? Heat of the battle? Well, I don't know. I'm pushing the pivot point. It feels like the pivot. No, that's not it. You see, it could be a problem. Okay, back to reality. These aren't autos. They're manual action folders, and it's less of an issue, but I still think it's an issue. Number one, why do we have this, this lock? <laughs> do we really need a lock here? You know, on the G10 version, I will say it's very positively actuated. It stays put. I love that. So if I don't want it, I can ignore it. And it doesn't automatically engage. Not so on the aluminum one. You know, I'll do a fast deployment on this, and I don't know if Hogue or Elishowitz or whoever designed it to be that way, but oftentimes this one will engage by itself. And so I come to that time it didn't, but sometimes it does just barely, or sometimes all the way. And yes, that's all the way tightened, if you're wondering. I don't like that. I don't like automatic engaging locks. I think they're gay. Yeah, totally. Totally not necessary. If you like it, cool. Good on you. But I, I would just like to do away with it. On the G10, once again, it's very solid. And then this is just, these are too similar, dudes. I mean, if we're going to do this, put a push button, you know, actuator right there, we should recess that pivot point totally. Or... Make it just so different. Maybe put this side on there so it's different. It shouldn't be textured, i.e. ringed, like the deployment actuator here. It's just an ergonomic miss. Is it minor? Mm, you decide. For me, it, it's annoying. It's going to take a likability hit for that. It's just, I don't know. It could be better. It's my mileage. There you go. Milling in that aluminum handle. And that looks good. That's 6061. I think they call it T6511 aluminum. Good looking. There's a problem with the handle right there. And that is, uh, I didn't really try to do it, but it looks like it'd be very tight getting your 550 lanyard in there, dudes. You can put a split ring, a stainless steel fishing split ring. I recommend that. And then you can put whatever lanyard on it you want. Again, I don't mean to just be rolling in spider call time, but that's a lanyard hole done right. Tone. Ergonomics, I will say overall pretty good. We need better jimping. We, it'd be nice to fix that. You're going to have to change the whole knife to do it, no doubt. And that takes us to the clip. And 
it's goofy. Totally goofy. You guys are getting a feature length on this one. That is a spoonbill goofy clip, and I hate it. I don't like the looks of it. It's just goofy. It's out of place on a tactical blade. It, it calls to attention the fact you have a knife because it's so big. It's not blackened. It's bright. I'd really like to see blackened clips on this, especially for a tactical blade. doesn't necessarily carry deep for you guys, you TMPers out there that don't like it. You'll love this knife. That being said, I didn't find it being obnoxious. Like, oh man, there's too much knife protruding from the pocket. No. Pretty good. Attached with three screws. It holds good. It's got good durability. The clip itself is good. I just don't like the look. So what did I do? You guys have already noticed this, no doubt. You guys are eagle-eyed. Well, this one's wearing a nut and fancy modification. That's what happened. Spun that bad boy off, took it down, slapped it on the grinder, and I done did ground it down. Just like that. Now that is a mo better clip. I like that one. Kind of see some heat discoloration. Then fancy should grind it slower. I don't care. It's not going to change anything that will matter. I think it looks cool. Ground it, then I filed it, and then I sanded it with like 400 grit automotive paper, and it's perfection. Close to perfection. If it was blackened in a loop over clip, then it'd really be perfection. But it's a huge improvement over that. So yeah, that's got a feature in the likability scale. Sorry, it just just does. You know, you do have an option, by the way, of going tip up, my preferred, or tip down. But even though this is milled out for lefties, you don't have the option of swapping the clip on that side. So consideration. Durability. Fixed blade reliability, ah, not really tested here. Maybe someone else will go out and destroy these knives. I don't recommend that. I think it's dumb. But maybe someone will. I would say probably pretty excellent. Clip will last. I think the blade steel, by the way, I didn't even mention it. Glad I remember that. 154 CM and it's cryogenically treated. Good US produced steel. I just love 154. It's so good. I fell in love with it years ago using Benchmates. Cryode, even better. I think the blade will last just fine as long as you take care of it and handle. I just don't see many issues durability wise. And if you do, check this out. Customer satisfaction is our number one priority, says Hogue. And actually, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you think this knife sucks, send it back. That's pretty cool. There's some other stuff there. So I think they take care of you, Hogue Knives would. would. And that takes us to fun part of the video. Guys just love this, and that is value and options. Well, it's a U.S.-produced knife. All the versions are, obviously. This one, I think, I will say on the table... Look in the upper right. If I can get it for you for cheaper, that's where I recommend you go get it. I always throw the weight of TMP around to get you good deals. It's one of my goals. In the upper right, that's the best price I can find you with a TMP supporting knife seller. I would say 170 to 185 ballparking it, 2012 prices. And yeah, that's a lot of money. It's U.S. produced. I mean, U.S. wages are being paid to produce this knife. It is what it is, you know. There's a lot of other options, though, for a lot less money. I ain't going to lie to you. I've been showing one all along. There's your whip sound. SOG. Paramilitary 2. C81. What is this? About 95 bucks. S30V steel. 3.8 ounces. Compression lock. But then fancy, that's not hard use. Oh, yeah, it is. Totally is. S30V. You know, does it have a very hard use blade shape? Yeah, you might make a case with that. Great option. Just reviewed, summer 2012, the beautiful Benchmade 810 Contigo, an upsized 710 McHenry Williams. That's a big blade too. This is model 810, CPM M4 is a steel, around 125 maybe less, especially if you go to my recommended retail. That is a sick blade, about $125, so it's less than this. And this is U.S. produced. That's what I'm saying. And it has a big blade as well, just like I said in that review. Just as long, just as capable in the philosophies of use I talked about. Beautiful blade. Love it. How about my very favorite, Ernie Emerson, CQC8. Great time talking with Ernie. Shot 2012. Great dude. It's one of my favorite models he makes is a CQC8. I reground this to conventional grind, not chisel grind. That is a sick blade, and it has the advantage of being waveable. Ernie's inadvertent design, he told us about on camera. That's 154, classic U.S. steel, classic U.S. design, G10 handles. 
What does this weigh again? CQC8, 5.2 ounces, same as that. How about size-wise? About same as that, price-wise. About same as that, 175. So that's a great U.S. produced competitive option. The CQC8 or several other Ernie Emerson designs to go up against the Hogue. Sorry, just keeping it real. You guys love that, I know you do. Cold Steel Recon 1, come on down. I love showing this because it's such a great knife for such a great price. Not U.S. produced. Wearing OS 8 steel and a classic Teflon clip coated clip blade. That sucker's sharp too, about 55 bucks at TMP recommended dealers. I just love it. I love the Recon 1. It's such a cool knife. It doesn't have, uh, you know, steel liners dicking it all up. High traction G10. Triad lock. Great blade. Finally, least but not last, here's a knife that's heavier. I like showing this because it is heavier. The 6 ounce 15020. I don't know if they still make this. I still, I think they do. With the much overused bone collector freaking nomenclature. I just get so tired of seeing bone collector stuff everywhere. It's just so played. So played. This is D2 steel, about 73 bucks. It's a hard use tactical folder with a beautiful access lock and the very phallic looking clip. The bench made one of these years is just going to drop all together because it's ridiculous looking. That's a good looking blade. I'm laughing because I still haven't formally reviewed this knife, but I've rolled it into so many videos. It's just hilarious. Competitive options. Feature length, KRV, nothing fancy style. These knives are awesome. About the only downsides I can say, you've heard, the clip. Pivot confusion. And I don't know. What else did I say? Those are my main major beefs on the knife. Major beefs. I mean, I lock up as tight. I think the... The locking, uh, the durability is going to be excellent. Great blade shape, steel choice, big slab of steel. Price is a little bit up there. Can't say it ain't. These are good blades, though. Good American produced, and yes, I will stick with it. Hard use, tactical folding knives. That's my KRV. See ya.